Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. We are going to examine how you can extend your date table query with an additional parameter. And as an example, we are going to use this question that was raised on the Enterprise DNA forum, where Paul requested the additional parameter to switch day of week numbering starting from 0 to 1. Now, note that this is not going to change the actual start of week day, because in this day table, that will always be Monday. Now, the scenario itself isn't overly complex, so I've rated it intermediate level, because we are not going to use the UI to generate any M code. Instead, we're going to write it ourselves. And to do that, you need some knowledge on how the M language is structured. So if you're a member and you're not in that stage yet, please go through to the advanced data transformation and modeling course and complete the introduction, right? Because that introduction uh, also includes this video on understanding M code. And that is what you need to follow along with this video. Okay, so with that said, let's go over the Power Query. As you can see, I've already copied the date table M function from the M code showcase category. So let's switch over to my browser again, right? So in the M code showcase category on the forum, you can find the extended date table topic. And there you'll find the code for the query that we're starting with. So if I open the advanced editor, here is the code. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of M code in there. So that could be distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my logic in a new blank query. And once that is done, we're going to incorporate that logic into this table M function. So let's do that. So close this and create a new blank query. I'm going to rename this a test query. Okay, and open the advanced editor. So the first thing we're going to do, right, because we're going to create a function is I'm going to start with an opening parentheses and delete all the code that's there. Next, because we want, we want to declare an optional parameter, we need to declare it as such. So I'm going to start with the keyword optional. We need to give our variable a name. So let's call that weekday start num. And I'm also going to declare its type. Now I'm declaring type because I want to prevent errors, right? If you don't declare a type, it will be type any, and you can pass any type value to that parameter. So you could in fact pass another table or a date value or whatever. I don't want that, I want a number. So to have Power Query test for that, we're going to declare it as a type number. So we're going to start with the let clause and let's also create the in clause. We need to create a variable name. So I'm going to call that weekday start. And we are going to test if our weekday start number has been passed. Now, if it has been passed, it won't be equal to null. So I'm going to copy this so I don't make any typos. And I'm going to say if this value is not null, then I want the value returned. Else I want a null value. Now, after the in clause, we have to pass that same step and press OK. So we now created a function and we can pass a value. So let me try and pass an A value, right? So and as you can see, because I declared its type, it's not allowed. We have to enter a number. So that is awesome. Don't have to worry about that. I'm going to delete that and invoke. 
So let's check our query again. And here you see that if it is unequal to null, then we want the weekday start number. If it's not, then we want the zero. So that zero is correct. Now we can also pass a one, right? So pass one and it returns one. Pass the year, so 2020, and it returns 2020. Now, let's be honest, we don't want that, right? We want a value that is either zero or one. So we need to create another logical test to see if the number that is entered is actually zero or one. And to do that, we can use the list.contains function. So I already set that up, created a blank query and entered the function name without the parentheses and pressed enter. So I can see the documentation on that function. And as you can see, it indicates whether the list contains a value. So you need to give it a list as the first parameter and then a value. And if that value is found inside the list, then it returns true. Otherwise it returns a false. So let's step back to our query and open the advanced editor again. And instead of testing whether it's not equal to null, we're going to use that list.contains. So list.contains there it is. And the first thing that we need to do is give it that list to check the values against, right? So I'm going to use the list initializer, those curly brackets to pass a list. So curly bracket, we want that value to either be a zero or we want that value to be one. At the closing parentheses, add a comma, and for the second parameter, we want to pass a value, and that is going to be our parameter here. So at the closing parentheses, and let's check. So if our list contains either 0 or 1, then we want the weekday start number, else we want a 0. And that's excellent. So press OK. And as you can see, we've passed the year 2020. Now because that value is not in our list, it returned a zero. So that is excellent. So we now can use this code, this test, inside our actual date table m function. So I'm going to open the advanced editor again, and I'm going to copy our logic. So copy that, close it, and step to our date table query. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that M code that I copied. Don't forget the comma at the end of the line and I'm going to copy my parameter name now. So add that additional parameter here. So comma, declare it as optional, paste in the name and declare it as a type number. Excellent. So we gave it that additional parameter. We also embedded our logic, but we need to do something with that result. So I'm going to copy that step name and I'm going to look for the date of week. There it is. And I'm going to add that value. So plus and paste in our step name. Done. So now we can invoke this query. And I'm going to pass January 1st, 2020 up to December 31st, 2020. Let's also pass that fiscal year start month, 7. And the weekday start num is going to be 0. Invoke. And this is going to be our date table. So let's rename it. And let's check the result. So here we have the day of week column. And as you can see that Monday is returned as a zero. And that is excellent. So if we change that to one and press enter, that now returns a one. So the number range runs from one to seven instead of from zero to six. 
and if we pass a null value, so if we don't pass that parameter at all, it returns back to a zero. So then the numbering runs from zero to six, which is excellent, perfect. So this shows you how you can add an additional parameter right to your date table query, should that need ever arise. And I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA channel so you don't miss out on any new content. Thank you so much for watching. All the best.